It is the last part of section 5.3, solving the dual problem with SMO, sequential minimal optimization. The algorithm is adapted to the SVM so that the solution always stays within the feasible region. Uh, let's start with recall the dual problem of the soft margin SVM. Here the objective is to find alpha which maximizes the objective function subject to these constraints. Here we have a question. Can we update alpha values one by one? More specifically, with holding alpha 2 to alpha n, can we update in the first direction alpha 1? So can we change alpha 1 to maximize the objective? Uh, can we make any progress? Yet the solution is feasible? That's the question. Uh, for the question, the answer turns out to be no. Let's see the reason. Look at the constraint the equality constraint uh, here the, for the first one in the left and for the others we move to the right so that we can get alpha 1 is the same as this term once alpha 2 to alpha n are fixed then and alpha 1 also must be fixed so we cannot update the values one by one. If you change alpha one only, then this equality uh, constraint will be violated. So here the conclusion is that we need to update at least two of them simultaneously to keep the solution feasible. Here is the uh, SMO. We start with a feasible vector alpha, which means that we initialize alpha values satisfying this inequality and equality constraint. Start with an initialization and uh, we'll try to update alpha 1 and alpha 2 holding the remainder values fixed. Here uh, we'll see what values of alpha 1, alpha 2 are allowed. Okay. The equality constraint can be that one can be written in this way. First two terms, including alpha one, alpha two, remain in the left side. For others, move to the other side, and then here we call it psi. And then its graph can be made in this way. We have to find alpha one, alpha two along with this graph. Here. Now, assume we know alpha 2, we picked alpha 2, then here now alpha 1 will be decided by using that equation. Here, once alpha 2 is known, so let's see, alpha 2 is chosen here. There's alpha 2, then now here alpha 1 must be decided here. That, way, that is alpha 1. So we'll focus on the optimization of alpha 2. So once we uh, know how to get alpha 2, then alpha 1 will be automatically decided by using this equation. Okay, so we'll focus on alpha 2 now. Okay, in this picture, now alpha 1. Mm, can be between 0 and C. Okay, C must be here. Between 0 and C, that means that alpha 2 must be between L and H. If you are choosing alpha 2 outside, for example here, then the corresponding alpha 1 must be larger than C. So that you have to choose alpha 2 between and H, of course. Here now, 
here uh, uh, the H must be smaller or equal to C and L must be uh, larger than or equal to 0. Anyway, alpha 2 must be between L and H. So we have here the problem, maximizing problem for alpha 2 between L and H. And then, now go back to the equality constraint. Uh, that can be, okay, no, that object function. The first summation, this portion, can be written alpha 1 plus alpha 2 plus now the remainder part. Here i is from 32 and alpha i. Now for that one, alpha 1, we use the uh, identity and here alpha 1 is replaced uh, with uh, that one and alpha 2 and the remainder part and also the main part of the object function. Then uh, this object function is quadratic in alpha 2. Here the multiplication will make a quadratic. So it can be written uh, basically some a0 plus a1 alpha 2 plus a2 alpha 2 squared. And it can be written because the other alpha values are fixed, uh, known value, so that it can be simplified in this way. And alpha 2, here a2, doesn't have to be, okay, this is a maximization, so that now if this quadratic has a shape like that, we can find the maximum over there, but it doesn't have to be negative. If it is positive, then maximum happens around on the boundary. So it doesn't have to be uh, negative. Anyway, it's quadratic in alpha 2. So that we can easily get um, the maximum by using calculus technique. We differentiate it and now equate to 0 and find this value. Or once a2 is positive, then the maximum happens around one of these points. Okay, so we decide uh, alpha two. Then, by using this equation, we can get alpha one, and then we move to next iteration. And with uh, another pair of alpha values, we try to uh, update the value. Okay. Uh, there are heuristics to choose the order of alpha i um, to update. Okay, and this is um, a huge. Uh, for this one, there are many uh, publications, uh, but if you are using uh, Cyclone, then I believe this is a default solver and it's well organized and some heuristics uh, are used uh, to get um, optimized and it's working very nicely. Okay, that is the uh, end of the section. Uh, thank you.